Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to put images inside a text like this. So let's get into it. The first thing you'll want to do is select your images and you should choose some which are nice and detailed because if you choose ones which have a lot of plain areas with no pattern etc it's just going to look a bit like a gradient or a normal colour which is not what you want. So these are the ones I have selected. We have the Venice, the Tokyo and the Tromso Northern Lights one. So you can see they've all got lots of different colours, lots of detail and things which are really going to show up in the text. The next thing you want to do is choose a font. So my go-to place is Google Fonts and I'd recommend Sans Serif and one that has some bold options. So you can choose the Sans Serif from here and then if you show only variable fonts that will give you the ones that you can choose a higher font weight for. And I've gone for this one here called Man Rope and I've added in the 400 and the 800 extra bold. So once you have your image and your font you can start adding them to your project. And this is mine. So in the HTML, I've just got a div with a class of flex container and then three paragraphs with the names of the cities I've chosen. And the first thing to do is to add my font. And I'm also going to add in the font size. And I'm adding that to the body. You could also add it to the paragraph. It doesn't really make a difference for this project. And I've already loaded in my images. And now it's time to get those images into the text. And to do that, I need position relative and then webkit background clip of text and then webkit fill color of transparent. So that has made the text transparent. But what we're going to do is put in an after pseudo element on the text. We'll add empty content, a position of absolute, and then the top and the left are zero. And then we need width of 100% and height of 100% too, and a Z index of minus one. Where's the picture I hear you cry? Well, because we have got three different pictures for the three different paragraphs, they each have a separate identifier class of the names of the cities. So I'm going to put the images in those separate classes because otherwise I'd be repeating myself for every single one. So background, image, URL, and then image folder, Venice dot JPG. So that has actually loaded the image. If I just find my image again, you'll see that the letters are taking on the colors of the sky. But the problem is that the image is far too big so you can only see part of it. So the solution to that is going back into the generic .text class and saying background size cover. So now you see, we can see much more of the image inside the text. But to see even more of it, let's increase that font weight to the 800 we loaded in. That's really showing up now. And you can also play about with the background position. So if I change that to bottom, you can see bottom part, or I can change it to center to show the middle part, whichever you prefer. I actually quite like the default, which is top, but it depends on your photo and your text as well. Now I'm going to add in the other two images I had for Tromso and Tokyo. Basically just need to copy this, change Venice to, actually Tokyo is the second one, and then copy it again and put Tromso in there. So the Tokyo one, I think the position is quite good, but the Tromso, I would quite like to have a bit more of the trees showing. So to do that, it's going to copy background position and that's going to be bottom. Hmm, not quite what I had planned. Let's try center. Yes, that's much better. Yeah, so that's how you do that. One thing to watch is depending on your photo and the color of your background, you might not have a lot of contrast between the text and the background, but you can fix that by playing around with filters. So if I go to my main class text, you could do filter invert 100%. So obviously that's actually decreased the contrast here, but if we had a background of black, that would work quite interestingly. You can also play with the contrast. So let's say we do filter contrast 200%. So now the colors are really popping. And of course you can play with opacity as well. So let's put the black back, take that off and then filter opacity 75%. So that looks quite nice. It all depends on the look you're going for and the images you've chosen. I quite like the popping high contrast look. 
And one final thing is you should always add in a backup background color just in case your image doesn't load. So just to show you, if there was some kind of problem with the Venice image, people would still be able to read it. So yeah, that's about it. This technique is very similar to one I used to make a gradient text button in another video, and I'll link that right here so you can check it out if you want to. Let me know if you use this technique in your projects, I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.